Most people are very unhappy with the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, at least with the campaign, which has been out for a week now, but there's something else that I think gamers should actually be mad at. When the developers of a game publish the minimum and required spec sheets before the game releases, this should be a reliable tool that you can use to determine if your gaming PC can play the title or not. Over the past year, we've been building gaming PCs based off of those spec sheets for the big game launches such as Diablo 4 and Starfield, and for the most part, these spec sheets have actually become pretty accurate. Most of them have become a useful tool for gamers in 2023. That's not the case though with Modern Warfare 3. Those are an absolute disaster of a spec sheet and instead of copying them, I just decided to build this. Mission failed. We'll get next time. This here is what I consider the ultimate budget and brand new gaming PC build guide for late 2023. And I'm gonna show you how to buy and build one for yourself. And we're definitely talking about those atrocious spec sheets. All of that after a quick word from today's sponsor. Corsair, and specifically their brand new HS80 Max wireless gaming headsets. If you know anything about me, then you'll be familiar with how much I love the original HS80s, so much that I asked my Corsair rep to send me a bunch of them for my Discord and Twitch mods. These new Max versions take them to a whole new level as they now have a 65 hour battery life, huge 50 millimeter drivers with Dolby Atmos to give you an edge in competitive gaming, and the microphone quality is seriously the best in the game. I'm always getting asked during my live streams what headset I'm using because the microphone sounds so clean, and that was with the non-max version. You can check these out for yourself or pick them up as a holiday gift by clicking the first link down in the description. All right, so if you look on Steam, it only shows you the minimum and required specs, and you can quickly see just how atrocious these are. There's actually more more information from the Activision support page where here it shows the minimum recommended which are the same from Steam but there's also minimum for multiplayer specs and a competitive slash 4k ultra section. These are so bad though like I don't even know where to start here. The minimum specs for multiplayer are actually probably the most sane combination of specs as this includes a Ryzen 3 1200, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a GTX 960, 1650, or an RX 470. If you were putting together a roughly $200 all used gaming PC, then those are the specs that you would probably be aiming for. I'm not a big fan of when they recommend Intel CPUs that are literally eight generations out of date now. I'm told! I think minimum specs for game launches these days should only include either yeah. AM4, AM5, or Intel 10th gen or higher CPUs. Those are the CPUs that I'd still consider relevant in 2023 and 2024, but the people that write these spec sheets just aren't up to speed on the market, unfortunately. Now, the CPU I decided to go with for our build today is the Ryzen 5 5600, and honestly, this just continues to be one of the best options available for a brand new and budget build. The used prices of these on AliExpress are actually very attractive as well, but I'll save that for another video. The these six core and 12 threaded little monsters cost $130 on average on places like Amazon and Newegg brand new. And even though AM4 is pretty much dead because you don't have a great upgrade path from here, I'd still consider it a solid option. If you really value upgradability with your CPU, then the i5-12400F for just a few bucks more is probably the better pick. This has a similar performance to the 5600, if not a little bit faster, and you do have a more wide open upgrade path with a better i5 or an i7 with Intel's 12th or 13th gen. Definitely don't pay for 14th gen though. If we go back to the spec sheet though, for single player minimum settings, everything is about the same except for storage space, and they also increase their CPU recommendation to the i5-6600 or the Ryzen 5 1400. This is weird because usually games that have both single player and multiplayer require more CPU processing power in multiplayer, but according to these spec sheets, they are saying the opposite. We can't test this for ourselves because the multiplayer isn't even out yet, but I highly doubt that the single player is more CPU intensive than multiplayer because that that's just not how games have been for a really long time. Regardless though, let's move past the minimum specs and get into the recommended specs because here is where they really jack things up. They're now recommending 16 gigabytes of RAM, which probably should have just been recommended for minimum settings, but that's what our build has too, as I went with the two by eight gigabyte YOLO white DDR4 kit clocked at 3200 megahertz. These are readily available for around $32 and you can easily find them on Amazon. Now for the CPU, they're sticking with Intel six gen for whatever reason, but now they're at a Ryzen 5 1600 X, which nobody buys anymore, and they're also saying that you can pair it with a GTX 1080 Ti, an RTX 3060, or a Radeon RX 6600 XT. This is what has me extremely frustrated. If you paired a 1600X, or oh my god, a 6th gen Intel i7 chip with any of those three graphics cards, you would have a 
terribly bottlenecked gaming PC. Quickly using our PC-Builds.com calculator, with a 1600X and a 1080Ti, you'd have a 16.8% bottleneck. With a 3060, you'd have a 12.7% bottleneck. And with a 6600XT, you'd have a 10.6% bottleneck. And remember that these calculators aren't foolproof and they are just meant to start your research. But with numbers like these, you don't have to research any further. They would definitely be bottlenecks. Just think with me here for a second. There's somebody at Activision or probably a team of people at Activision that actually think that this CPU and GPU recommendation is a good idea for their customer base. That is awful. I mean, we're not talking about the minimum settings just to get the game running. These are literally called the recommended specifications. This is what Activision recommends their customers play their game with. This right here is why gamers just think that these minimum and recommended settings are a joke in the PC gaming industry. And it's just sad because like I said, most games have been trending in the right direction this year, but this one from Activision, these are just terrible recommendations. But speaking of trending in the right direction, the prices of B550 motherboards has been coming down a bit lately and I scooped up this beautiful ASRock B550M Pro SE white motherboard for a great price of just $85, which is pretty good for the aesthetics of this board. It also came paired with a free 500 gigabyte SSD, which I didn't use for this build because I wanted one terabyte, but that's a crazy deal that a lot of people grabbed in the ZTT Discord server. We post only the best PC hardware deals almost every single day in the ZTT Deals channel and I always have that Discord invite link down in the description. Another part that a lot of the ZTT members have been buying lately is this power supply, which is the MSI Mag A 650BN, which sells for around 60 to 65 or 66 dollars. If you don't want to buy that Apivia nope. Prestige that I keep mentioning, this is your next best bet for a budget tier C power supply, and it's perfect for more budget oriented brand new builds like this one. But if you aren't super focused on keeping your build budget and you want to spend a little more money to get higher FPS, then definitely don't look at these recommended competitive settings because this would be a terrible build again. Now we have the CPU upgraded to a very outdated i7 8700K or a Ryzen 7 2700X. And for the GPU, they recommend you pair it with an RTX 3080, an RTX 4070, or an RX 6800 XT. I don't have a problem with any of those recommended GPUs. If you're a competitive gamer, then I'd also recommend all three of those options, but you absolutely at all costs cannot pair them with a 2700X. These bottlenecks are even worse as you can see on the screen right now. And again, I just don't understand who at Activision is making these kind of recommendations, but they most definitely should be fired. They suck at their job. Moving on through our build though, the GPU I went with is the PNY RTX 4060 8GB and you can find 4060s for as little as $280 these days brand new which is actually not terrible. Now I will admit I originally tried to go with an RX 6700 XT for this build which would have cost about $30 more and it's a little bit more performance but that card didn't work out for this build and the 4060 is what we had left in the studio. The RTX 4060 is actually not a terrible choice anymore as that price does continue to drop and I Honestly, it's only a few FPS behind the 6700 XT, but it's cheaper, so the pricing kind of makes sense. And remember, Nvidia has an 87% market share, so clearly most people want an Nvidia GPU right now, so the Ryzen 5 5600 paired with an RTX 4060 is a respected combination for a new budget build. Aside from that though, we'll rattle off the rest of these parts real quickly so we can get to the benchmarks. For the SSD, the Clev Kraz C710 1TB makes a return to the channel, as this was on sale for $39. There are several 1TB models available available that you can go with for around $40 though, so I wouldn't stress too hard about this selection. For the cable extensions, these are just from Easy DIY, and you can always buy these for 20 bucks. I also painted the stock Ryzen cooler that the 5600 came with to keep the all white aesthetic going. And finally for the case, I decided to bring back the Antec NX200M because the white version was on sale for $55. I've used the black version plenty of times already, and this is indeed a decent case option for low budget builds, but this white version is very clean for the price and I just had to use it. Now, there's not a ton of cable management room as this is a smaller micro ATX case and it only comes with one pre-installed fan in the back but I just threw two extra fans that we had up here at the front and we're good to go. We ran a full Cinebench 2024 stress test and our CPU did peak at 85 degrees but that temperature is never going to be hit during a normal gaming load and our GPU peaked at 66 degrees which is obviously perfectly fine. This certainly isn't a system where I'm worried about the temperatures even with a budget case and extra spare fans combo. All in all you'd be able to repeat a build like this for yourself for just a touch over $700 and we're about to 
see that that's all you need to spend if you want to play brand new titles like Modern Warfare 3 at 1080p with ultra settings. Speaking of which, that's the first game and settings combination that we used, and with 1080p ultra, we got a smooth 109 average FPS. That 1% low is pretty high as well, so despite the absolute terrible recommended spec setup, this game isn't terribly unoptimized right now, but again, we're testing before the multiplayer game unlocks. All of the Modern Warfare 3 footage that you've been seeing in this video was indeed recorded with this build, just so you know. After that, we tested 3D Mark's Time Spy, and this $700 gaming PC cranked out a very solid five-digit score of 10,195, and that's really good considering my last $700 build guide from five months ago got a score of 8,683. That was using a 12100F and an RX 6600 XT, so we're definitely getting much better value for our money these days with the current PC hardware marketplace, which you love to see. What you also love to see is a good Cyberpunk 2077 score because this one is just now a beast with all the new updates, but still in 1080p with ultra settings, we got a very impressive average FPS of 74. Same thing with the brand new Assassin's Creed Mirage. For this one, we did dial the settings down to 1080p high just because this still is a bit unoptimized and tricky to run, but we still got over the 60 FPS mark with this setup. Starfield was tested after that, and we know this is one of the toughest games on the entire market to run. And here, in order to get above 60 FPS, we had to scale down to 1080p low and turn FSR on, and we got 68 FPS. And the last game I have footage for here is Forza Horizon 5. We're deciding to stick with this game instead of the new Motorsport, by the way, just because that built-in benchmark is like 15 seconds long and has all sorts of weird settings. This one is a longer two to three minute run and more reliable, so I kind of wasted my money buying Motorsport. But yeah, here back in 1080p ultra settings, we got an FPS average of 108. Here's the rest of the games that we tested, and as you can see, most of these are set to around 1080p high or ultra settings. The Ryzen 5 5600 and RTX 4060 is a great combination, and this is a lot of price to performance for just a $700 brand new gaming PC. So yeah, it's unfortunate that we still can't rely on developers to give us a decent recommendation for the specs to play for their titles. Imagine a world where this was a reliable resource to use. I'm not sure how many brand new PC builders rely on these spec recommendations, but they are always readily available on the Steam store page, so thousands, if not millions of gamers are definitely at least seeing them. And if you're a new PC gamer or about to be one, remember that you can always go to zttthelp.com if you want my one-on-one -on -one help with planning your next gaming PC. I'll use the knowledge and aesthetic talents that I've gained over the last decade of building gaming PCs and put them to work for you to create the ultimate parts list. That's always linked down in the description. And if you missed the video from earlier this week where I got challenged by another PC building YouTuber, then check out the video that's on the screen now.